Good morning, Kahal Kadosh, Shavua Tovo Meborach. Welcome everybody. Today, Tuesday, the 27th day of Shivat, corresponding to the 6th of February, 2024. Today's class dedicated for the Refua Shelema of Sipora, Bat Marinel Lea, Bat Sara Rachel, Bat Haya and Hacham Yaakov Hillel, Ben Gladys Hatun, among all of the Holim of Am Israel. So, We'll continue by Ezat Hashem discussing uh, some of the suggestions that the great Rabbi Chaim Palachi brings in Mo'ed Kol Hai on the small actions that we can do specifically during this period of the Shovavim, as we discussed for the past few weeks, matters that we are actually, thank you so much, matters that we are actually do on a regular basis, thank you so much, and we'll add an extra concept to better understand how this behavior can remedy sins or mistakes of the past. Baruch atta Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shakol Nihiyah Bidbaro One of the things Rabbi Chaim Falachi writes and it says is the concept of learning Mishnayot. Now, usually, the concept of learning Mishnayot can be seen activated when, has Shalom, somebody passes away and the person dedicates the learning of the Mishnah in loving memory of someone and there is a spiritual connection because Mishnah and Neshama are the same letters. If a person wants to benefit the Neshama, learns Mishnayot. The Hidush of the Mo'ed Kol Hai today is that the learning of the Mishnayot not only benefits the soul of the Niftar, of someone that God forbid is no longer among the living, but actually when a person learns Mishnayot, there is a benefit to the very, very own Neshama. And it makes sense. Because if Mishnah and Neshama are exactly the same letters, so what difference does it make if I'm learning the Mishnah for my own well-being or if I'm learning the Mishnah for somebody else's spiritual well-being? They both achieve uh, the same concept, but it says in this particular case that a person should make the effort to learn Mishnayot. Additionally, says the Mo'ed Kol Hai, the increase of the reading of Tehillim. And I'm sure, at least I like to believe that, that we all read Tehillim every day of our life. Some people may read more, some people may read less, and there are different concepts, how many chapters of Tehillim a person should read a day. And I clarify, the chapters of Tehillim that I'm referring to, I'm not talking about the chapters of Tehillim that we say in Shaharit, or in Minha. Why? Because this is part of prayer. I'm talking about that a person devotes a few minutes a day to read Tehillim. For example, the book of Tehillim is divided into five books. The book of Tehillim is divided into 150 chapters. The book of Tehillim is divided in 30 days. So if you want to take an easy formula, that's the one I usually utilize myself. You're welcome to copy it. I don't have copyright. I don't have intellectual property on this matter. It's available. Lechol Am Israel. Open the book of Tehillim and look at the date of the month, of the Hebrew month, and then you read a few chapters. So today is the 27th day of Shevat, like I said in the beginning of the class. Today is actually easy Tehillim reading. Even though is more than five or six chapters, but today is all the Shira Ma'alot. So you're going to read them. It's like you're reading the Mirot of Shabbat. And if you train yourself, and I repeat this, you're not obligated to do so. But it says the Mo'ed Kol Hai that the Tehillim, and I really have a whole a, a, a concept of the book of Tehillim, you know, a, a lady that we, we are reminding uh, we remind we reminded her name in the beginning of the class that it's going through medical 
challenges, okay, regretfully. And uh, everyone that we pray for the Fuash Shalema, we're not talking about headaches, okay? We're talking about matters, God forbid, which are challenging, difficult, of the Mahala, uh, etc. So she asked me, Rabbi, I want chapters of Tehillim for a specific purpose, for a specific reason, okay? So Baruch Hashem, the Tehillim, it's a multivitamin. Even if you read, even if you look at the book of Tehillim, every chapter of Tehillim has a reason and a purpose. And Baruch Hashem, many years ago, I put this in writing. It's in writing. I have it available. If you want it, I'll send it to you after the class. Remind me. And then you look. I want to see a miracle. So you see chapter 91 or 92, I believe. I want Refua Shelema for the heart or for the eyes or for the ears or for the legs. And the book of Tehillim, like I said before, is a multi-purpose uh, concept. And that's why, in, in, in a joking way, when people say the word Tehillim, it says to heal him, to heal. You know, you read Tehillim, you bring Refuah. In Israel, they say Tehillim, Tilim. In the Hasidic world, Sepharadim pronounced Tehillim with a full sent with a full word in the Hasidic Medavzugan Tilim that's how they say Tilim what's Tilim in Hebrew missiles so we say Tehillim we get rid of missiles that's the power of the Tehillim I'm not joking that's what I said it's a multi-purpose you want to celebrate a miracle Tehillim you want to formulize a request Tehillim you need Refua Shelema Tehillim. Somebody passes away, God forbid, Tehillim. And I tell you one more thing. Go to itorah.com, our home, okay? Go to itorah. I believe to the right side of the website, there is something that says Tehillim reading. And then you have all the 150 chapters, and then you click, and then you have a search box, Tehillim for a lady that is about to give birth, for example, right? And then you can generate a printout. If it's for someone that is living, then you add after the alphabet, kera satan. If it's somebody that is no longer among the living, you add the word neshama. That's how you read Tehillim. If you read Tehillim in an official level, let's say Ereyat or your site, so then you print the name, of the of the person plus the mother's name and then you put the neshama and that benefits the soul so it says Rabbi Haim Falachi that not only the Tehillim benefits the soul after the soul departed but the Tehillim brings salvation and protection while the soul and the body are connected one more it says Rabbi Haim Falachi as well the concept of Tikune HaZohar. Besides the actual Zohar Kadosh, there is something called Tikune HaZohar. Extra uh, chapters of the Zohar Kadosh that the, the fact that they are called Tikune means Tikune comes from the Lashon, Tikun. So there is a very famous Tikun. It's called, I think, Tikun Memhet. This is called Bereshit Taman. It's found in many Sidurim. After Aleinu Leshabeach, you have a Tikkun called Bereshit Taman. That's the chapter 48 of the, fix of the Tikkunim of the Zohar. I think that your Sidur, you have a Sidur there in your Koracha? What's the name of your Sidur? The man Shemo Be'ahava? You see how I know my customers? Let me see the Sidur. Maybe I'll find it. It's a lucky day. Now he's going to auction the Sidur. Look, the rabbi used the Sidur in the class for me. Tu compris? Wonderful. I found it. Look. Baruch Omer Be'ose. Right here. Many people recite this after Shaharit prayers. 
ok and this says here segula niflaa to bring spiritual repair to the neshama ok from whom who says this Rabbeinu Ha'ari Rabbeinu Ha'ari says read this Tikkun Zohar I have it in my Sidur I have it in my desk I have it in my Tehillim thank you so much Hazako Baruch what that's missing is the benefits of the Tikkun Memhet my printout has the list of benefits I don't want to interrupt the class to go to my office and bring the, the, the paper that I have, but take my word for it. It brings an unbelievable amount of benefits. I personally try to recite this every day. But sometimes the Yeserara plays games with me. He tells me, do it after the class. So I ask him, which one? The first class? No, after all of the classes. Then I finish all the classes, and then I go to my office. Then I have a pile of homework that I must, I, like I'm back in school. I come back, the office says, okay, Rabbi, we need to deal with this. And the Yeserah now plays games with us, with all of us. He doesn't want to lose customers. But take my word for it. It has a tremendous amount of tikkun at all levels, at all levels, physical, emotional, financial, spiritual, during the life for marriage and many other matters. Belly Nether, I'll try to bring the checklist tomorrow. And also the, the part of it is, and I think that this is mentioned by the Eliezer Papo in the Pele Yoes. He writes and it says that ideal when a person learns Torah should understand, thank you so much, should understand the thank you, should understand what they are saying. But there are two parts of reading that even if a person does not understand, still it achieves its desired benefit. One is called Tehillim. The other one is called Zohar. Those are the two things. Mishnah, Gemara, Humash, Nevi'im, Ketubim, Alakha, if a person doesn't understand, so no, it's not the same. But the Hilim and the Zohar, and the Zohar is very deep, even though we do have some translation into the Hebrew, but really the Zohar is a deep reading, but it doesn't matter. It brings the spiritual benefit that a person uh, wants. Additionally, he says, and this is brought down by Rabbeinu Ha'ari, Sefer Kal Nidre. In the night of Yom Kippur, it says that Rabbeinu Ha'ari will tell the students, go the extra mile and have the zechut of holding the Sefer of Kal Nidre. Because the Sefer of Kal Nidre is a tikkun for Shobabim. And the question is, how tikkun Shobabim Zera Levatala, that we have been discussing it, has to do with Kal Nidre. Short answer, because the Kal Nidre prayer has to do with the words that comes from the person's mouth. According to the Zohar Kadosh, part of the challenges of this topic of the Shovavim has to do with the Berit Milah. You follow me so far? How do you say in Hebrew words? Mila. So you know what it is? Mila, Mila. Mila, Mila. If the Mila from the mouth, that means the word, don't get ideas now. Just in case. If the Mila of the mouth, the words of the, of the mouth are proper, kosher, suitable, respectful, this brings an automatic shemira to the milah of the person. That's why it's called berit milah. Berit is covenant. But the covenant is not only to the circumcision concept. It's the way a Yehudi talks. 
So if my mouth, so to speak, has a certain level of kedusha, a certain level of holiness, like the Hafez Haim writes in the topic of Shemirat al Lashon, he says many times people pray and they feel that the prayers are not achieving much. And it says very simple. Is that the person wants to donate blood and the blood is contaminated. God forbid. Can someone that has, has shalom, a medical condition of a certain severe medical condition donate blood? For sure not. Why not? Because you don't want to run a risk that God forbid the recipient may be affected by the sleeping cell that a, a person may have in their organism. So the Hafez Haim says the same thing happens with the keli of the words. What is the keli of the words? The mouth of the person. The mouth is the container, right? That's what the Bishop Bar Yochai says. If the creation of mankind would have been up to me, he says, I would have created two levels of protection. The mouth has two, two, two sets of lips. The mouth by itself is, has two levels of protection. The denture, the teeth of the person, and the lips. Interesting enough, the rest of the openings only have one layer of protection. The nostrils, the ears, the eyelids, one, 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 one. The mouth has two. Yani, like ashgaha, double seal. You, wipe, you buy wine, right? You notice that the wine comes with a cork, and on top of the cork, they put another seal. That if someone tampers with it, you, it's, it will break, and if somebody pops out the cork, the air will not allow to bring it back. I'm sure there could be somebody who's going to know how to, you know, hack the system the way they say it. But that's a, a, a simple proof. So he says, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, if the creation of mankind would have been up to me, yani, I would have determined that the mouth of the person should be double. If you have two eyes, two ears, two hands, two legs, two nostrils, two, two set of lips, are you going to say, Rabbi, is going to look weird? It's not going to look weird. It looks weird because we only have one set of lips. So it says one for Kedusha, Tefillah, Tehilim, and the other set of lips for Devarim, Betelim. Continues the Rabbi Moed Kolhai, and again he goes back to the concept of speaking. Shelo ledaber bebetakneset kelal afilu ledavar mizva chutz midivre Torah. In this case, Rabbi Haim Falashi quotes the Hida HaKadosh. That's the source. And it's not easy what he says now. I just read you the Hebrew version so you get a hint of what we're going to be discussing next. And it says, don't talk at all at the synagogue, even for matters of mitzvah, unless it's matters related to Torah learning. So you may say, Rabbi, it's impossible. I agree with you. I'll be the first one to say, to reach this level, you must be a malach. And you need to walk around with a sign that says, you know, you have a name tag that says, hello, my name is Joseph, right? So you walk around with a name tag that says, don't talk to me. Or I don't talk at the synagogue. By the way, Many years ago, many years ago, I went to a place to pray and I saw someone in front of him who has this sign. He says, I'm in the prayers in the synagogue talking to Akadosh Baruch Hu. If you want to talk to me, wait after the prayers and talk to me after, outside of the synagogue. It's a very powerful a statement and a very strong commitment to do that. To do that. Okay? But the metziot is that how, how extreme this may appear to be. Let's be honest here. We all can use an improvement in this particular statement from the Moed Kolhai. 
understanding that the moment of prayer, it's a very holy moment. And as a rabbi, I can tell you, people approach me daily, daily. Some people ask questions. Rabbi, I have a question. It happened to me a few days ago. I ask him right away, do I need to call at Salah? Do I need to call at Salah? No. Can it wait till after Tefillah? Yes. Can it wait after Hazara? Yes. Because if I talk during Hazara, what I'm telling you, you're allowed to. So if we work at least, at least, and I'm not, God forbid, God forbid, minimizing what they might call high rights. But if we're going to find an area that we can enhance our Kedushat Betakneset, because at the end of the day, it's all about Kedusha. Kedushat Betakneset, Shemirat Berit, all this is connected. So again, this is also about talking. So if we take upon ourselves that during prayers, we don't talk. That means from Baruch She'amar till the end of Tahanunim. Because we need to remind ourselves, perhaps I'll take a slight detour to remind myself, and you happen to be listening, Samalachot. From Baruch She'amar till the end of the Amidah, we're not allowed to talk. But it, go, it goes further. When a person finishes the Amidah, you're not allowed to talk neither. Sure, you take three steps. You should remain standing where you finish the Amidah. And when the Hazan starts the Hazara and he's about to say Nagdishach, that's when we go back to our private Amidah place and we say Nagdishach with everybody. Obviously, if a person has a medical condition or a person cannot stand too long on their feet and they need to sit, sit, but don't talk. Because your Amidah did not finish. Even though you finish your Amidah. You know when the Amidah really finishes? At the end of the Hazara. Because as the Benish High writes, the Hazara, the repetition of the Amidah, supplements and gives the final touch to our personal prayer. It's like we, you send the package and then you follow the, you track the package online and it's telling you, you're going to be next in the delivery. And until the package is not delivery, you're not happy. Hamavdil, we do the Amida. We, the, the, Amida reaches, just to put it in plain English, a certain level. I need the final touch. In the world of construction, it's called CO, correct? Certificate of Occupancy. So I want the CO for my tefillah. You know what the Benish Hai says? That is the Hazara. And that's why it is essential that we answer Baruch Hu Baruch Shemu and Amen to each Beracha. Because every Amen that we answer in the Hazara, that delivers that prayer. Simple. Easy to understand. Then we have the Hazara. Obviously we don't talk during the Hazara. We have then uh, the time of the Kaddish, time of the Sefer Torah. In other words, all these are areas in the prayer that talking needs to become for later. Is it easy? It all depends on the person. A person who truly understands and wants to do the right thing understands. A person cannot exercise self-control, doesn't understand. How can you not talk? So I'm telling you. You should not talk. Because if I talk to my friend during the prayers, when do I pray? You follow? It may sound funny, but that's the Messiut. In other words, I have 22 and a half hours to talk to all my friends, to talk to everyone. Do I need to talk specifically while I'm praying? Okay. I'm only creating an awareness. That's all. Another one, you see many of the things that we're talking about today, it's all about the talking. The talking. Why? Because it affects the Kedusha of the Mila. Further, 
another one. Lasim shalom ben adam la habero uben ish le ishto. Another suggestion, says the Moed Kol Hai, to bring peace among people. Why? Short answer. Because when God forbid a person commits some of the transgressions related to the topic of the Shovavim, we created a separation. What kind of separation? Between the body and the Neshama. Even though in simple statements, separation between the body and the Neshama, it's usually utilized when, God forbid, a person leaves the world, but spiritual inappropriate behavior, it causes that the Neshama of the person takes a step back from the person. Where do we learn this from? From chaos, anger. Today, anger is not the topic. Today is not the topic of anger. But anger is not a foreign topic to us. We discussed in the past that when a person gets angry, so to speak, the good, happy, clean, beautiful neshama lives. So then somebody asked a long time ago, so how come that a person doesn't collapse in the moment of anger? There are cases that, God forbid, the person collapses physically. God forbid, has shalom. Heart attack, sure, sure. But from a spiritual, I don't want to be so dramatic, but from the spiritual perspective, the Zohar Kadosh says, there is a switch of the Neshama. They gave the person a secondary type of Neshama. How do you call this Neshama? Sitra Ahara. God forbid. That means from the other side. They give him a fake Neshama. A neshama that keeps the person alive, but a neshama that derives their energy through sin. Sin of chaos. Now, that's one example. When a person commits this avon, also the neshama suffers. That's why we learned a few days ago that when we say the amida especially the Beracha of Barech Alenu, there we say, Mikol Mine Mashhit. What's the meaning of the word Mashhit in Hebrew? Destroyer. Destroyer, right? That's why there is a prohibition called Bal Tashhit. Bal Tashhit means don't be wasteful. You're not allowed to destroy a tree that is a fruit-bearing tree. Because Baltashit. I'm giving you a very superficial explanation. Or if a person, for example, has money and wastes the money in things which are not suitable and proper. That's an avon from the Torah, Baltashit. Wasting. Or the way that a person shaves. Okay? Baltashit. The way you shave, you're also destroying the facial hair. So there is a concept of Baltashit. Another concept in our case, Ashhatat Zera, wasting the Zera. So when we say Zera means semen, Zera means Zera Levatala, seed, the seed of the men. Thank you. I apologize to the female audience in the, in the virtual world. But okay, Leshem Shamayim, don't worry, it's fine. We are humans. Good question. Let's continue. So it says here, when we say the Beracha of Barech Alenu, we're not only thinking only about terrorism. We're talking about this particular negative uh, forces created by this Avon. Now, I think that I need to welcome to the class today Rabbi Moshe Cordovero. You know him? Tomer Devora. He's buried in Tzfat. 
but in spirit he's here now because I'm summoning him to come down to the class. I'm not kidding you. That's what's written in the holy books. When you quote the name of Sadiqim and you learn their Torah, suddenly they become activated and they become our advocates in Shamaim. 100%. Dovev Siftei Yeshanim. So I'm going to tell you what he says. In the early chapters of Tomer Devorah, it's fascinating because this statement that I'm going to quote in his name is the protection that we have every day of our lives. Because if that statement is not accurate, our life will not be as good as it is. As it is. Our life is good. Despite our personal hiccups, because we all have our luggage, correct? Each person has their own area in life that can utilize a boost of energy, a boost of beracha, etc. Improvement, of course. But overall, thank God we are able to wake up in the morning, we are able to walk, we are able to come, we are able to see, to function, to spend time learning Torah together, praying. All this is priceless. And the question is, how can we have that good, that good, when maybe our behavior does not match our compensation package? Because you get a compensation packet. We all have it. We all have it. We have a package that Kadosh Baruch Hu gives us. You can call it wife, you can call it children, you can call it home, you can call it houses, you can call it a car, income, businesses, assets, stock, savings account, all of the above. Now, can you imagine, before I go to the Bimoshe Cordovero, if God determines what car I'm going to drive today, based on my actions yesterday maybe yesterday i qualify for a lexus but today i qualify for something simpler and tomorrow maybe i qualify for a cadillac and the next day you 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 qualify for uber or bicycle or the free beave Aventura Tesla transportation system or maybe on my uh, the actions of the day before I deserve to live in this type of apartment maybe the next day I should sleep in a hotel but that's not the way Akadosh Baruch Hu functions you live in the same house you drive the same car you have the same business you have a lot of things that don't change. And the question is, why not? Short answer. It says to be Moshe Cordovero as follows. When a person does a mitzvah, it's beautiful. Mishnah in Pirkei Avot. We do a mitzvah, we create an advocate, a sanegor, somebody that vouches for us. Hazaku Baruch. Who doesn't want to get an A in the report card? We all want A. Okay? But what happens if instead of doing a mitzvah, we're doing an avon? The same power that creates an advocate, it creates a category, a prosecuting angel. So says to be Moshe Cordovero, when these two, pres two creations, spiritual nature, obviously, are created, the same thing happens. The good creation reports to Akadosh Baruch Hu. And Hashem says to this creation, Chazaku Baruch, welcome, I'm so happy to see you. But what happens when a person creates a negative force? This force says, God, I'm here. I need to eat. 
that's what it says. I need to be fed. It's like you buy a cell phone. What is the first thing they tell you to do? Charge the battery. So the cell phone needs to eat. He needs the energy. So he comes to Akadosh Baruch Hu, God, I'm created. I need to eat. I need energy. Says Rabbi Moshe Cordovero that Hashem, God, could say to him or to eat, listen to the words, Eneni Zan Mashhitim. I don't feed wasted energy. Same language. Mashhatat Zera, Bal Tashhit, Mashhitin. The same Mashhit of the Amida. I don't feed terrorism. Because why should God waste good energy on a failed venture? It's like you want to invest in something that filed for bankruptcy. There is no way. Once the bankruptcy was filed, you can buy it two cents on a dollar. That's a different level of investment. But to invest in a stock that is under invest investigation by the SEC is a waste of money. So God could have said, you know what? I don't invest in failed ventures. Go to the one that created you. These are the words of Rabbi Moshe Cordovero. Who created that negative creation? We did. The Avon that we did. It says Rabbi Moshe Cordovero that if that will happen, our life will not be considered life. Because we're going to be plagued from so much adversity and darkness and negativity surrounding our life that we rather not to be alive. You can survive. But that is the theory. HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, okay, you want to eat? No problem. Here is a voucher. There is a free continental breakfast in the lobby. Go and eat. And what do I do for lunch? I'll take care of you. And what do I do for dinner? I'll take care of you. On why Hashem does this? Two reasons. Number one, to protect the person. Because if this policy will not be in place, forget about driving what we drive and forget about living where we live and forget about your bank account. Because all those things are out of the chesed of a kadosh baruch Hu. The moment that we think I'm deserving, that's the beginning of the headaches. Exactly. That's why Amalek, Rashet Evot, Achshav Lo, Mahar, Lo Yachol Kasheli. Four excuses of Amalek. When he needs to do something good, what does he say? Achshav Lo, not now. Da'ain, Mem, Mahar, Maniana. I'll do it tomorrow. The lamed, lo yachol, I can't. The kof, kasheli, is difficult for me. Yani, every hedge, every excuse, why not to do something good? More or less. So therefore, the Moshe Cordovero writes and it says that all this protection that we have, even though when our behavior is not the way that it should be, it emanates from the Midah of Sablanut of Akadosh Baruch Hu, That God has patience. God has patience. Okay, I wait for you. How long are you going to give a free breakfast, lunch, and dinner to this dark creation? He says, I have unlimited credit, God says. Like American Express, Platinum, Black Card, whatever card qualifies for that. Hamavdil, right? 
That's how Akadosh Baruch Hu fun functions to our benefit. But there is one challenge with this statement that we don't know what is our limit. We don't know. To some people, it could be 50 years. To some people, it could be five years. To some people, it could be five minutes. I don't have that answer. And I don't think that no human has that answer. And that's why we talk about the concept of not procrastinating. Based on the person. Like you have a social security card and you have a DNA and you have fingerprints which are yours and no one else has it. Also, it's individual account. I don't know. Maybe a person uh, may have more tolerance than others. We don't understand the ways of God. That's one secret that we also always need to know. When we attempt to understand God, we're going to get stuck in, at the corner because we don't understand. Even Moshe Rabbeinu attempted to understand. And Hashem said, Bereit et ahorai. I mean, you need to be watching the movie from Bereshit to follow, to place a, track, a GPS track or air tag on each soul and each person to follow and to understand. But we don't have to go that far. Bottom line, it says, when we make peace among people, we activate the power of speech. That is what gets activated to make peace. Making peace is not by ignoring. Yeah, ignoring to a certain extent. But the truth is, if a person wants to bring shalom between husband and wife or between friends, what is what you need to do? Talk. You got to talk. What, are you going to make peace, silent treatment? It will not work. You have to speak. So now I'm using the words which is directly connected to the Berit Milah physically and spiritually and I'm utilizing the power of speech to do something good. And I'll finish with one more. Ledaber Sanegoria Tamid. Always be positive. Speak from a positive perspective. Because to criticize is easy. We saw it in last week's Perasha. Itro comes, gives a comment to Moshe Rabbeinu. Correct? Nabol Tibol. But what was the beauty of Itro? That he did not limit his comment on the challenge. Because I'll tell you as a rabbi that I get all kinds of comments, all kinds of suggestions, and all kinds of ideas. But most of the time, I don't get solutions. They expect me to find a solution. I don't mind trying. But sometimes will help if you give a suggestion with a suggestion of the solution. And that was the greatness of Itro. Itro saw something. Itro saw something that only an outsider can see. Not an insider. Because Moshe Rabbeinu, what is he thinking? I'm dealing with the Jewish people. What else do you want me to do? I'm dealing with them in a boker hada arev. From sunrise till the night time. But it says, if you're going to continue like this, you're going to run out of battery. So Itro says the Pardes Yosef and others, the greatness of Itro was that came with a solution. And I think that we learn this for life. That there are problems. Who doesn't have problems? Which area in our life cannot use an improvement? But if it's going to be utilized just to show a, a fault or a deficiency without the solution, stay quiet. And that's what it says. If you're going to say, le daber sanegoria tamid. Always sanegor in a positive way, 
etc. Which brings me a message that I have to deliver to someone today. And with this, I'll finish because I have a Spanish class for ladies uh, a bit later on. I'll tell you quickly. I'm not going to go to the story. But I'm going to tell you a summary concerning someone that was going through very difficult spiritual challenges. Okay? He developed an addiction. But not the addictions that we usually connect to. Alcoholism, drugs, etc. This fellow developed an addiction to video games. Video gaming. Okay, for, for video game is a screen that you play a game. But for you it's fine, don't worry. Keep learning. A young man. Somebody will explain to him what video game means later. Madhav, no money involved. He plays so long, so much, that he spent 23 hours in his room. No, no sleep. Came out to get some food and there were days that he will not eat. A brilliant young man that had a lot of future in different matters and he became, I think, a very uh, professional in this concept in the, in the video gaming industry, but his life was going down to drain. He wasn't bathing, he wasn't eating, he wasn't sleeping, he gave up his career, everything that he had went down the drain. Sad, and I know the story firsthand. So, a relative tells me that they tried everything. Everything that you can imagine, they tried. Nothing worked. They even prayed. They even prayed, prayed, and prayed, and prayer wasn't doing its desired effect. So I don't know exactly how the connection became a connection, but once they spoke to a certain rabbi, this story happened in Europe, by the way, and the rabbi asked the same question. What, when you pray, what are you praying? So the person says, I'm praying to Akadosh Baruch Hu that my child, this is the mother telling me the story, <coughs> is having this addiction and please activate his heart. So the rabbi said to the mother, I believe that you need to change the way you pray. And he quoted what we are learning today. You can pray by telling God your problems or you can pray on a positive side. In this particular case, I think that is attributed, I wasn't able to verify it, but I heard from a good source that this is mentioned by the Baal Shem Tov or his grandson, the Bin Ahman of Breslev. Great Sadikim. And it's, they say, either one of them, for me, both of them are Kedoshim, obviously. And it says that when you pray about someone that has a problem, praying because of the problem, it does not help as if you pray to a Kadosh Baruch Hu by highlighting the Midot Tovot of this person. In other words, if I'm praying to God, God help this young man that has an addiction with video gaming, is not taking a shower for the past two weeks, barely eats, is 23 hours in his bedroom playing games and he threw his life out of the window. What kind of chizuk 
or positive reinforcement this prayer has. The opposite. I'm adding more wood to the fire. So what was the formula suggested? Ignore the problem. Talk about the positive. We have a young man, good family, good parents. Yes. A person who loves to do good things, who wants to do chesed. And this is all true because before this addiction developed, this was the type of personality he had. And guess what? The happy ending of the story. Because I got the phone call with the happy ending. I got the phone call. No, he did not win. He woke up one day, opened the door of his room, came out of the bedroom, hugged and kissed his parents and asked for forgiveness and I want solutions. That's it. What reversed the focusing on the prayer? That was the greatness of Itro in last week's Perasha. He spoke about the challenge, but he gave a solution. So I give you a suggestion. Next time you come to me with a suggestion, you be ready with a suggestion. Not only with a complaint. No, Rabbi, why don't we do this? Suggestions are always welcome, but it would also help if you come up with a solution. That doesn't mean that I will not tell you your suggestion is wonderful, but it's not a reality. What works in certain places doesn't mean that it works here. What it works here doesn't mean that it works in certain places. Certain ideas can be cloned, can be copied, can be mimicked, can be reciproc can, can be reproduced, but some particular reasons, you know, it cannot. But obviously, we always welcome suggestions, but try to make sure that the suggestion comes from a positive angle because that achieves much more, the way we say in English, positive reinforcement. Yeah. Right. You know what I tell you? You know what? I have the solution to your budget. I tell you where to trim the fat of the brisket. Although it should not be too dry neither. Okay, but you got to readjust the numbers. That's all. <laughs> Budgeting is something that we do on a daily basis. You know, Baruch Hashem, we have to. We have to for the proper financial well-being of the institution to maximize the benefit to the kahal. So we understand this very, 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 very well. And that's why it says, always, if you have, if you have nothing good to say, say nothing. Not easy. Not easy because some people, regretfully, that's the only thing they know. That's the only thing they know. And I hope that it doesn't apply to any of us. But out there in the world, there are people, regretfully, that for X, Y, Z reason, they carry a lot of negativity. And that is dangerous. Even forget about this heavy topic that we're learning today. For life. For marriage. Imagine yourself, you like the dinner. Everything was good, but... That but... It destroyed the whole thing. Hazako Baruch, you're a good listener. He listened to the story the other day. Okay, everything is good. Baruch Hashem, be thankful. You gain more from a positive than a negative uh, perspective. My dear friends, have a great day, everybody. Thank you.